So we have a guest, mm -hmm. which we met, uh, kind enough to come over here and chat with us. Yes. Johannes, all the way from Austria, traveling to Las Vegas. He is a film director, and he wants to talk to you guys about mm -hmm. his new movie. So come on in here. Yes. Jude, sure. Jude, get out of here. All right. Johannes, I will get have the, a seat, sir. I will get the heck out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> to all the fans who want to see Jude, and now I have to see my strange. Oh, Jude, Jude is a fan Austin favorite. face. But, but, look at that. I am life liking Aww. your Aww. Facebook page. Oh, look at that. Life like. Life fantastic. Yeah, there there Thank you, you sir, so much. <laughs> all right, Johannes. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you told me very, something very interesting. You said uh -huh. that you had just finished editing and filming your movie. Oh, yeah. So tell me, what is the movie? Okay, what is the movie? So, uh, the pre-stories, uh, because the cool thing, and I really like that about interviews with people you do not know about. Yeah, I have like no idea. Have no fucking idea who I nope. am. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, so, the backstory. So, my name is Johannes. Okay. I'm from Austria. I have a complicated, long, very German name. Grenzfurtner. Okay. Uh, G-R-E-N-Z-F-E-R-T-H-N-E-R. -E -E oh my That's goodness. Like how you, yeah, well, well, you can find me on Facebook. Okay. Uh, and the thing is, like, Grenz actually means the, like a border or like a frontier or something like that. And okay. Furtner is like a, a shallow creek or fort. So okay. I'm technically Johnny Border Forder in English. So Johnny. Johnny. Johannes yeah. is Johnny. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I did yeah. not know that. Cool. Or Ivan. Ivan in Russian. Ivan. Same thing. Ah, yeah. A very no. popular name. Anyhow. Uh, so the story is um, I'm, I'm an artist and a filmmaker. I've been doing that stuff for 30 years. Wow, Just okay. in the last couple of years, I've been kind of like focusing more on, on feature films, documentaries, and now a horror film. Excellent. And oh, the, a horror yes, film? Yes, oh, yes, so yes, yes, yes. It's a very, it's a very strange <laughs> horror film. Oh, that's I'm, our okay, bag, good, good, dude. Good, we good. love that stuff. And, and the, the, the story is that when I grew up in the like 80s in, in Austria, of course I grew up, like I'm, I'm, I'm a classic nerd. Yes. Back then in 19... Austria, there was no name for that. Okay. So it was just like, I kind of learned over time that I am a nerd. But I mean, I was online with a modem the first time in 1987, so when I was 12. The, the so I'm like a very early pioneers, adopter. The, the pioneers the, of the The BBS internet. systems yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, so over time, uh, I kind of realized that I'm a nerd and I'm also very creative. And I started doing weird stuff. I started doing like a fanzine. And out of all this project, like I kind of found it, uh, let's call it like, kind of like an art group. Okay. Art sounds so strange and big and whatever. Yeah? Artsy but, fartsy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but 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 it's kind of like an art tech nerd group okay. called Monochrome. Monochrome. Uh, and and so over the years we have been doing many many projects. Excellent. And and the basic idea of Monochrome was always to find the perfect weapon of mass distribution of an idea. Okay. So we always like wanted to tell stories and get messages out and talk about stuff that we found interesting. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to make people listen because they don't want to listen. You yeah. probably know that how hard it is to get Yeah, to get an audience. You have to, like you have to exactly. build an audience. It takes yeah, time. Yeah. In the meantime, you would call that kind of like trying to find kind of like a viral approach to certain things. Yeah. But, but I mean, uh, and, and the basic idea was like, what is the best way to, to, to spread an idea? And like, just like one example of, of the art projects that we're doing, just to give you an ex example about that, is that uh, we started in 1999 to do an annual convention, an annual festival, about cocktail robotics. Cocktail robotics. Where people build machines and weird contraptions that serve alcohol. I love it. And love we're it. doing I this since 1999 every year, our, including last year. The people who are fans of our show are like, oh my God, they just met their freaking doppelganger yeah. from Austria. <laughs> oh. I just went crazy, you guys. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's amazing. And, and so like in, in the last couple of years, there has been more talk about, you know, like uh, even like, Wired and magazines like that have been writing about about our our event. Fantastic! And there is even like a little side event now in San Francisco. So that's one of the things, and I like that idea very much still because the problem most of the time is 
to get people into really doing some stuff, being creative, just yeah. like getting their hands dirty. Yeah? yeah. And especially technology is for many people something like, oh, I have, I have no idea how that yeah, works. I'm not smart to figure. I don't know how to build enough. a robot. <laughs> and in the meantime, that's like that's not true. I mean, you can buy an Arduino or something like that for like twenty bucks, yeah. and you have pretty much like all the stuff you need to make a cocktail robot. Okay. You just need a cool idea to do that. So now I've I've seen like I can tell you weird machines and weird concepts and many drunken people over over many Dude, years we so, need a cocktail machine <laughs> we need a little robot to make us drinks on the podcast that's amazing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing is like but exactly that's exactly the point that's a good example of how monochrome works to get something out because people like robots you know yes. like i mean we are at a yeah. fucking science fiction convention like people yeah. like robots Although there are not that many robots on Star Trek, but Borg uh, and uh, Data. Yeah. Data is like the only one. Yeah, and that's he's got his brothers. Like an android, Data's you never know. Data. Yeah. yeah, Data, yeah. Lore, yeah. Before, yeah. they're all just Data. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and Mr. Singh. What is like Noonien Singh? That's the, the creator. Noonien Singh. Yeah, uh, that's um Khan. And it's Khan. Khan. Well, what's the name? What's the name of of of, of Data's? Oh, his, oh, the father of Data. Oh my gosh. Who's Someone the, has to know that. Somebody in the chat. Data is the creator of Data, Doctor Something. I know exactly what you're talking about now. I can picture him. I have his that, action figure. Is Nunian? No, Nunian Singh is Khan. You're right. Nunian, is it? Yeah, Nunian Sun. Google it, Jude. Okay. Anyhow, We're at a Star anyhow. Trek convention, and we don't Doesn't know the matter. answer to this. But 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 the cool thing about that is, like, people are like robots. Yes. People people are super into that, uh, and people also like alcohol yep. and have the good cocktail conversation stuff like that and kind of like we offer that so people are kind of attracted by the basic and strange and also very ironic idea of like a cocktail robot yes and then we have oh yeah you were right in oh I, was song. A, I am a nerd what's somehow it's, he is a nerd yeah. Yeah. yeah okay what's so then what's Khan's name what's Khan's name then Khan? probably Khan something similar something? to that I don't know Khan I don't know. oh my god yeah, Wrath of Khan. Yeah, his full name it sounds very similar to that. Man. All right, anyway, continue. So, yeah. so that and, was kind and, of like that was like a, a jumping off point. It doesn't matter, like a non secretary okay. somewhere. Okay. And so so then people come, uh, they go to the just like kind of like a mixture of a crazy art show, okay. a crazy technology show, but also a party. Khan Nunian Singh. Singh. Okay. Just like, yeah. Just like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Why do they, they scream Jesus? I they mean, hoodwinked atheist, us. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, and then people come and see and have a good time with the robots and they get into the most wonderful conversations with the people who made those robots. Yeah, for sure. How does it work? Ah, really? What pumps are you using? This, that, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly we have a very, so we have a very engaged, very positive attitude crowd yeah. that suddenly get into the idea of like, maybe I can do something like that. Maybe it's not that hard to build something with your own hands yeah. with technology and that's a, a good idea kind of like to, to to get people involved into something but it's also almost like uh, like like teaching people something but they don't even know yeah. that they're being tricked into learning something so that's, creative learning yeah it's the like way that. I think that's the way and, most people and, learn and and, and, I mean, we, and other things for example there's one project we're doing at monochrome uh, where like we started with that in 2005 where we actually bury people alive in a coffin no way. So people, we take people and we offer them the, the, the service of like, you can get into this coffin, we bury you alive for 15 minutes and then we get you out again. And people sign up for that. And people do that. We have we've buried 500 people so far. Jude, would you do that? <laughs> so there's one other long-term project we're doing where we bury people alive in a coffin. Oh, yes, I would do that. Really? Yeah. yeah. What is, I don't, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Unless, the people who are claustrophobic, like they, they don't do it anyways. Too. No. Nah, no spiders. No, no, no spiders. Just you know what? Honestly, it sounds like a nice break. Yeah. <laughs> just some nice quiet so, time for yeah, 15 so minutes. Yeah, but, but, I mean, yeah. <laughs> for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something That's like that. It? Yeah. Can I do, like, couple? Yeah. So, do, I'm going to ask some weird okay, details yeah, about this. Sure. But, like, for air and stuff, you have tubes and whatnot. No, 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 no. Like, for 15, 20 minutes. I mean, uh, one of my colleagues, Gunther, he was the first one. When we did it the first time, that was uh, at a gallery in L.A., in the backyard of the gallery. It was very Tarantino-like. Like, oh my gosh. So like, and we dug a hole in the backyard of the gallery <laughs> and we almost like hit a gas pipe. Oh no. Like digging the hole. Oh and that was that, that almost killed people, not the coffin. But, <laughs> eh. so, the so, artist, so, man. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, the, the cool thing is like, I like technically we are artists because that's where you get money. You know? yeah. like, uh, 
I never considered myself an artist, although I'm doing very arty things. But yeah. it, mm, any, anyhow, but I'm still a nerd, so that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, a mad scholar. Yeah, okay, so many yeah. mad sco- scientists. Where are the mad scholars? I guess that's me, but I'm right anyway. So uh, how, did that, how did that morph into filmmaking? Oh, yeah. So the thing is that, as you see, there are many things that are kind of like interesting for me. Uh, and I'm trying to just like find, the, for example, the thing about be, uh, burying people alive came out of the idea that that I am very claustrophobic myself. Okay. I wanted to deal with that. Face your fears. I read up a lot about the history of why were people being buried alive? Why did it happen? And, and, and some are related to the basic idea of like that we didn't know so well how death works. We didn't know like when people were really dead. So okay. there's a whole history of like a me- medical, but also uh, a cultural history. There's of, some, of there's some vam- the vampire stuff's going to happen and, and, soon. And stuff like so that, yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and the same thing is, is true for, for making films. Okay. Even more so than if you do an exhibition or a computer game or something like that. The cool thing and the magic about filmmaking is, uh, especially, of course, if you can show the movie in a real theater, uh, where it's dark yeah. and, and there is no way out for you. There is, you, even, <laughs> you even have to consider if you go to the bathroom because you might miss five minutes yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah? So the idea of like being able to create a narrative, create something that people to a certain degree expose themselves to. Like it's almost like they're giving over agency yeah. to the person who made that thing on the screen. There's many times where I regret giving a movie two hours of my life. <laughs> exactly. <yeah? laughs> but but it is kind of like, I mean, I don't know how many, I, I don't even know the percentages of that. There might, might be an interesting study there, but how many people do actually really leave movie theaters? Because for me, I only did it once in my life and I was really sick. And that's why I left the movie theater. Oh, okay. Even if the movie was bad, I said like, no, I'm going to sit through this. Yeah. This is just like... Uh, it's an investment at that point. It's an investment at that point. You pay for it and you were there. And it's also something like th- there is a different kind of mechanism like in you a movie theater. The yeah. Good yeah. or bad. I have, a, or bad. I have yeah. a funny story about yeah. that that happened recently with Fast and the Furious 9, yeah. the newest Fast and Furious movie. About 30 minutes in, I was like, this is a pile of shit. It's a awful movie but then the longer i stayed the more fun i started having and when i left the theater i was like god damn it i love that movie the (laughs) the best fun you can have in a movie theater is if like most people don't like the film yeah they start laughing yeah they start laughing at it they they throw popcorn i don't know (laughs) it's just like it's just like like communal hackling of a bad movie it's just like great, <laughs> yes, you know? yeah. it's just like it's, I love it you know? yeah, that's exactly what happened during yeah. Fast 9 the whole audience started laughing at like the wrong time yeah. during the movie I haven't seen it yet I heard it's, it's, it's getting too too se- too too self funny or like yeah, too matter or too very, ironic very or self aware yeah, very yeah. self aware yeah so you have to be kind Probably of prepared that can for that. be very good kind of self-awareness but probably not in that case i had a blast but i i totally understand why people are like rolling their eyes i get that but i had so much fun so anyway yeah never got into it by the way never got into it but (laughs) my my personal fast and the furious is um uh pirates of the caribbean oh i I love that i i I love them and (laughs) I think like they could even do like another twenty of them, and they could degrade and degrade and degrade. I would still watch them. <laughs> this is like I, there's like some, right there some guilty you. pleasure. We just of the Caribbean. we just did an interview it. or not an interview. We just did a podcast about that trilogy, the, yeah. the first three movies. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it's one of my favorite franchises. I no, love absolutely. them. I have so absolutely. much fun. Johnny and, De- is one of I Johnny mean, Depp's best characters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I like even like one of my favorite ones is the third one. Yes. Where the whole kind of like just the, goes nuts. The, the, the East India Trading Company, yes. where I mean the whole film, and it's just like a popcorn movie. But yeah. the whole film is really a very funny dissection of of global capitalism because you take the whole idea of of uh, uh, the East India Trading Company. The East India Trading Company was the first multinational corporation in the history of the planet. Okay, yeah. That's where, where it starts. That That's tracks. where, like, yeah, there's like a strange form of, of, of colonialism by the means of trade. Yeah. And it's so, I, and most people are not interested in that kind of stuff and <laughs> whatever, yeah. But I mean, they put, it's not necessary to make a pirate movie that deals with, with international 
East India ancient tra yeah, trading trade companies, companies yeah. as the villains. Yeah. And the pirates as the good all, ones. <laughs> because the, the pirates, them, right? all they, like they in the movies, they always were like, a ship is freedom. Being a pirate is freedom. Yeah. And yeah. the East India Trading Company was making the globe smaller, yeah, which was exactly. making it less free. It, it, it's making the globe smaller on the one hand by 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 the trading, yeah, and and by kind of like occupying markets, but at the same time, it's also eradicating the the mystery out of it. Okay, it's like suddenly yeah. like, uh, and and that's what I really liked about it. Is it's just like strange where where the main bad guy of the East India Trading Company is looking for the magic artifacts yeah. because it would make his business more Better, profitable. Yeah, exactly. And that is just like some some nice nice <laughs> popcorn storytelling. So but we've, anyway. we've established your nerd cred. Yeah, exactly. So that's good. <laughs> okay. So tell us about your movie. You said okay. it was a horror movie? It's a horror movie. I'm yeah, so yeah. interested. So what? it's my first it's my first horror movie and it's my first film that is not per se humorous. Okay. So I've done a couple of films for example uh a couple of years ago, I did a whole nerd documentary called Trace Route. Trace Rounds? Yeah, Trace Route or Trace Routes. Route. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, that's kind of like a very, you know, like I don't know if it's uplifting, but it's my, it's a very positive film about nerd culture. Okay. It's, I try to find really interesting people uh, who kind of like indulge in their nerd culture, mm -hmm. and also people where where you feel that there is still this like subversive, interesting countercultural aspect of nerd culture. Okay, yeah. Uh, because I grew up with that stuff in the 80s and 90s, of course, and I, I, I kind of like it, yeah? Did it focus on any one particular uh, fandom, or was it just broad no, no, spectrum? No, no, it was pretty much a very autobiographical... Uh, autobiographical... Uh, That's movie. a big word. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, uh, where, where it's, where it's kind of starts pretty, pretty much with me uh, and my, my backstory in Austria. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I want to go because most of the nerd stuff that I grew up with in Austria, even in the 80s and, and 90s, uh, is uh, it's just like American pop culture, of course. Um, okay. And uh, so what I what I tried to do is I wanted to go through the United States. I wanted to make a road trip going to all the locations and places that I grew up with that I kind of like adored as a nerd mm -hmm. and try to find out uh, uh, is the stuff still there? Are people who were involved in those projects still around? But also meet people who are into some kind of weird, interesting, nerdy stuff. Okay. For example, just around the corner here in Phoenix, there's a whole company uh, with like 50 people working there who make dragon dildos. And, um, and, dragon and, what? And, and dragon dildos and basilisk <laughs> vaginas and stuff no like way. that. Yeah, they're called Bad Dragon. You can Google them. Bad yeah? Dragon. Bad Dragon. And it were, they were started by one nerd from Scotland who came to the US who wanted to make with clay some interesting figurines and realized the only thing he's good at is making dragon builders. <laughs> and now he runs a company with his friends. He probably is working. rich as hell right now. Yeah, they're rich as hell. That's and amazing. And for example, and so like even nerds like you don't know about that. No. So, so and that's what I try to find. Okay, People so you're... who are very interesting, positive, interesting stories about cool nerds. Okay, okay? So that I gotcha. Was, uh, so it was your documentary. It was a documentary, okay. Trace Route 2016. Yeah. So and this film that I, I did now, it's called Masking Thresholds. Masking Thresholds. Thresholds. Yeah. Okay. Which is, by the way, a term from science, from audiology. Okay. It's uh, uh, so it's uh, because the main character is a guy who has tinnitus, so, okay. a very nerdy guy who has tinnitus. Okay. For three years, and so to compare it to my nerd documentary, this film is about the dark side of the nerd, the bad side, when okay. all goes wrong, when when your obsess, obsession with something, your obsession with science or whatever it is, just like just like kicks you over the edge. Okay. And suddenly everything goes... And it's at the same time was a very Lovecraftian film. Ooh. So it has a very Lovecraftian okay. vibe to so it. So is it more, when you're saying horror, is it more like a psychological horror then? It is It is all. It is It is splattery. It is oh, psychological. No okay. So, but I mean, most... I don't want to spoil too much, but no, of course not. The thing is that if you if you promise, especially nerd uh, nerds from the horror yeah. genre, we want too blood. much. They <laughs> they they kind of like they take it seriously. Like even on IMDb, if you go to IMDb, the best horror films of all times don't have good IMDb ratings mm. because I think that horror nerds are super picky. I think they are very like they never give something eight. Yeah, maybe a seven. Yeah. Like that, you know? it's yeah. a very yeah as far as like a subculture uh jude's in that she yeah, loves yeah, the yeah what she loves 
and what we talk about on the podcast a lot is like those 1980s like real schlocky kind of B yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, movies I, the one that we love to talk about all the time is Night of the Comet oh yeah, absolutely we, no. we love that movie it's, it's which fantastic is all, which is also almost like a teeny rom-com yeah it's a rom-com <laughs> it's a weird nice. goofy comedy movie yeah. but it's also a horror movie we love stuff like that yeah. we love blood and gore absolutely so yeah. w- uh, if you could put yours in the category uh, from like B movie Night at the Comet to full on John Carpenter, um, oh, where would you put it? I have no. I honestly have no idea. You don't know. I have okay, no we gotta idea. watch it and find I out. Have, I have no. Really, have no idea. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I, I, uh, if there are references, and I only kind of like realize that when people like because so far, the film festivals are watching the film because they're deciding. I, I. That's the one thing I'm. I'm so sorry about is like. A couple of really cool film festivals already decided they want to show my film. Oh, nice! Because I just like started submitting the film three weeks ago. It's really super it's, fresh. This is brand new. Super awesome. fresh. I got an exclusive interview, guys. Yay, yay. <laughs> and uh, so, so I can't t- because they, of course, want to do their yeah. press releases and all that stuff. But what I heard so far is that one guy said, for example, it reminds him a lot of this like two 1970s films. Okay. One is called Phase Four. Okay. And the other one is called Altered States. You Altered know that. States. I've heard of Altered States. I don't think I've seen it. All that, and my, I mean, they are both weird films. Okay. And I okay. like them a lot. Excellent. The one was made by Saul Bass. Okay. Uh, his only directorial like work, and he did all the title sequences for Hitchcock. Oh, nice. So he's a very crafty, very, very uh, okay. like n- nerdy character. Yeah. And the other guy, the other director uh, of Altered States, is is Ken Russell. And he did like stuff like gothic and and uh, anyhow, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they are both not arty, arty, but they're strange films. Okay, yeah. we at love the, strange films. At the same time, I mean, for me, like the blueprint for for the script is definitely uh, inspired by weird fiction and Lovecraft and stuff like Excellent. that. Excellent. Okay. But it's also like I'm not. I'm pretty sure that even some Lovecraft fans might watch the film and not completely see why is this a lot so i mean i submitted it to the lovecraft film festival i wonder if they will show it that would but be for me it's so very clear which which festivals lovecraft picked it up uh i can't tell you oh you that. can't tell me I that, tell you oh, that. That's man. The, that, that, that they made okay. me not tell you got an ndr and everything so not disclosure but cool cool ones like okay. in the u.s in spain in australia okay so it's like all right all the place. Yeah, that's yeah. good yeah, yeah. congratulations yeah, man thank that's you. fantastic thank you. thank you i'm looking forward to it yeah. uh when do you think it'll be open for oh. the public also i think that like i mean the premiere will be sometime I, I i suppose like end of september uh, so october they're going, they're going november, for like a halloween I, like, like for for yeah because uh, i started submitting to the film festivals there was still for this season for the for the autumn season still accepting films okay uh so and most of those festivals they have their their screenings like end of september october november Excellent, around that stuff. i hope it blows up and then this interview will just <laughs> will get everywhere that's fantastic and i didn't even say anything about the film i know yet, that's so still cool people like, love the backstory no, though yeah, yeah. i love hearing about where you came from no. from the goofy robot cocktail making things to the to the documentary to this that's, that's, very that's dark. fascinating it's very dark and cool. it's it's in a certain way you're right it's very psychological mm. although okay. it has some super gory elements okay. to it. I, I love but it. I, I don't want to oversell that okay. because okay. The people it's just like you know like when you watch stuff on VLC and skip the 10 <laughs> seconds all the time yeah. when is this stuff happening when is this stuff happening no it is it is a very very dark film and okay. it's very very Can much you... about kind of like a person like imagine it without spoiling imagine it you know those films where, where there is a there, 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 there are cars on very icy roads Okay. Like on YouTube, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and the car tries to break, and it just but, slides. But, but, into but it just thing. slides and slides, and you watch this, and you're just like, "Fuck!" You know, <laughs> you know, you know, something bad is gonna happen, but you just know how bad it's gonna yeah, end. Yeah, okay. So, and it's, that's my film. So your film is like <laughs> is like watching an inevitable car crash. I yeah. love it. I love which it. Is, which is definitely the Lovecraft element, okay. too, because if you read the Lovecraft story. Uh, you yeah. always know it's like how it's gonna end. Okay. You don't read Lovecraft because you want to be surprised. All right, so we've got a, a few new uh, viewers in here. So remind <laughs> them what the what's the title of the movie? It's called Masking Thresholds. Masking Thresholds. Yeah. And it will be 
yeah. uh, it'll be out in sometime September, October. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like in, in the festivals. In the, the festival season that starts okay. now. Hopefully, knock on wood, that we will be able to sit Excellent. in movie theaters and oh, not gosh. having too many so cool. virtual <laughs> releases and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But um, yeah. So is there anything that you can tell us about the production of the movie that doesn't spoil it too much? Like, how did you guys, did you go super low budget with just one single yeah. camera? Yeah. Or so, did you have a full-on production? The thing is, so uh, the film, and I can really tell that, like from an aesthetic point of view, almost half the film, if not more of the film, is shot in macro shots. Macro in, shots? Like incredibly enlarged things, like okay. just like a little piece of pizza is suddenly almost like a mountain. You know, okay. It's just like enormous like enlargement of okay. things. And that has to do with it because the main character is a guy who has a tinnitus and wants to find out why he has a tinnitus and how to fix that. Okay. And he's a very nerdy scientific character. And of course, as you can imagine, that all spirals out of so control. So as a, as a director, how did you make those uh, size differences happen on screen? Is it a camera trick? Is it's, it... it's like... like like fifteen thousand uh, dollar lenses that oh we gosh. got from friends who no gave them for us, gave them to us for free. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in, in, incredibly tricky, like tech stuff. Okay, yeah. so you're working and with with camera yeah, yeah. stuff. No, okay, gotcha. My my friend Florian Hofer, he's my my uh, uh, DOP, and I learned to know him just a couple of months before we started working on this film. Okay. And the funny story is he made this really crazy porn film like of all, of all things yeah. of course he did yeah. and there is there is a porn film festival in vienna that oh really gosh. screens lots of feminist porn also trans porn so it's kind of like the like alternative porn and there is something like that and people probably know that but wow. anyhow so and i went to the party there yeah okay and one of my other friends from vienna i know crazy people he made a <laughs> film for that porn film festival yeah and worked with florian on that film and he told me Johannes, if you ever need a super nerdy, very technical uh, guy who knows his shit about cameras and, and interesting setups, yeah. you have to work with Florian. And I looked Florian in the eye and said, like, yeah, let's do something together. And, and he made a horror the, movie. Yeah, and that was the same time that I started working on that film and writing the script <laughs> and doing all that <laughs> stuff. And half a year later, we spent uh, probably three weeks in one little room in my okay. apartment and we shot the film there. So it's you, one you shot it in one room? In one room. Okay. Wow. Technically speaking, not only one room, but one desk. That's one why desk. I need the enlargement. You know, like it's about... Anyhow, I'm not oh, spoiling wow. it. Yeah, don't spoil, <laughs> it. don't spoil it. Is there is there just one actor or do you have a whole cast? There is one actor. One actor, yeah, one no, room. There's, no, there are actually two actors. There okay. are two actors, namely two people who speak. Okay. The main guy, uh, his name, by the way, uh, is uh, Ethan Haslam. Ethan Haslam. Okay. He is an LA actor and uh, because... Uh, we shot it all in one film and you only see parts of the actor. The hands are mine. The voice is Ethan. Wow. So it's, uh, it's, so we split like, almost like the main character is split in half between me and that guy. This is fascinating. And, this is <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because yeah. everything, like, so yeah, we'll see. I hope we'll, we'll I triggered out. a little bit of interest I'm in very my interested. weird little project. I am very <laughs> interested. I can't wait. I hope it blows up. I hope it gets all kinds of press. That's amazing yeah, for you, man. See. Congratulations. That's, That's I, so I cool. hope. I hope. It's 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 not your classic teeny slasher film. Okay. So if you're into weird shit and and a little bit experimental, but also your also in a certain way very classic horror film, uh, you 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 will be Kadish, happy. What's the director who made that movie Eraserhead? David Lynch. Oh, David Lynch. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Is it yeah, something yeah. along those lines? Because um, Eraserhead was a freaky ass movie. I would, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh okay. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and and David Lynch actually said that he didn't know like what the film will be about while he filmed it. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of created it in the editing. Yeah, uh, I watched but, that. I, got... I mean, it is not. So, so the the cool thing about Lynch is that that it is so very metaphorical and so very yeah. like all the stuff including the stuff that is is very plot driven like like Twin Peaks mm -hmm. that is very plot driven but it is still very very weird. strange yeah, yeah. Very David strange. Lynch is a very strange uh, guy my film is not so very weird in that sense of like that, that not metaphorical uh, there, there is stuff in there's it, stuff in there, 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 okay. stu there is stuff in it that, that that is being debated but it's not not in that kind of like a okay uh, 
No, it's not, it, 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 it's not showing a tree for two minutes and people have to figure out what the tree means. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, we actually got a super chat, uh, $1.99 and a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Roger. Appreciate the support. Thank you, thank you. Oh, All you right. got money. Yes, money. <laughs> oh, There's wow. Money. Some, every once in a while, somebody throws <laughs> ah, sure. us a dollar and I have to take a piece of clothing off. It's weird. Um, <laughs> so once this is, you, you get your press release, you go through the, the um, festivals and yep. whatnot. Uh, do you have something else in mind that you want to do? Do you want to go a different direction? Or are you going to keep going down the horror route? Yeah, what do, what I, do you want to do next? I, I just recently had this idea. So uh, for, for a horror movie, but that horror movie, but that's just like a little little side idea that I still have to think about it. Okay. What I'm doing right now and why I am I am in town. And here in Las Vegas. And I am, why am I even allowed here in the States? Because I'm an Austrian. And people who know a little bit about uh, international bureaucratics <laughs> know that no Europeans are allowed to go to the U.S. right now. Hmm. There is a travel ban still from unless, Europe. Unless? Unless you get a national interest exempt, which I got. Because, I mean, I'm having a small production company and we are right now working on a documentary okay. that we are still finishing. Excellent. And pre planning some, uh, um, you know, like uh, location scouting for another film. And that's why the U.S. Uh, hmm. consulate let us in. Because we exactly. are supporting job creation in the U.S. There you go. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> Capitalism for the win. So, so what I'm working on, that's, that's the next film that's, that's in the pipeline, is okay. I'm working on a documentary. A documentary. Yeah. Uh, can and you tell us what it's about? Yes, it is about uh, a very interesting little hacker nerd space in Durango, Colorado. Okay. And they made one of the first, if not the first, super successful COVID uh, relief project. Oh, okay. Making... Uh, like masks and stuff like okay. that and that was necessary because the, both two hospitals in the region in Durango and in Farmington, New Mexico Durango, Colorado and Farmington, New Mexico uh, suddenly in, the, in last March and April had so many patients, COVID related patients mm -hmm. because of the proximity to Navajo Nation oh. and so it's a documentary about pretty much like the history of the US why is there something like Durango? Why is there something like Navajo Nation? Okay. Uh, and it's also a history about nerd culture and hacker culture and COVID and why you have such shitty healthcare in the US. <laughs> so that's my next project. It's, it's all the government's fault. <laughs> right on, man. That's partially, fantastic. Partially, yes, but, but not only. Yeah. yeah. What are you trying to say, Jude? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you already asked him this, but if people want to look up your other films and all of your other work, like oh, where can okay. they find oh, you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, do you have a social media that people can follow you Oh, on? yes, yes. So, first of all, I have a complicated, stupid last name that I mentioned already. Okay. And if you Google that, it's the only one on the planet. Okay. If, if you find that, you find me. Oh, if you want to spell it like, out you know, for like, him. Wikipedia article about me and okay. stuff like that. So cool. that's it. Johannes, uh, Johannes, what was the last name? G-R-E-N-Z-F-U-R-T-H-N-E-R. -E -E you guys got that? So, look uh, him up. Uh, maybe... <laughs> Type it in the chat. Do you have, a, so people do you have a, like know. Instagram or anything like that? Yes, yes. I'm on Instagram with that stupid long name. Okay. All right. And uh, but if you Google Johannes of Monochrome, for example, okay. M O N O C H R M, that, okay. that's, that's my my, my my production company and, and art group. Johannes Monochrome Grant Grants mistyped my name. I think Google is clever enough to figure find it out. Me. Yeah. If there's only one. And I mean, <laughs> of course, what you could do is you just like because that's easy. Just Google for uh, masking threshold masking or trace route, and then you find my name as the director. There we go. And, uh, there we go. There you go. All right, guys. If you want to check out this stuff, you know where to go. Hey. Rewind the video and listen you. to it back. You found it. There Jude I found am. it. It's that, that easy. It's, that yeah. Easy. Jude found it. You Absolutely. guys can find it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, it man. It was a really pleasure. Appreciate it. it was great. Just like running into. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm only here for a couple of hours because Max Krodenchik, who played Rome on, on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, okay. He's a friend of mine. Oh, He's excellent. also part of the documentary because. He plays Uncle Sam. Perfect. Uh, so, so like he gave me free tickets. So Excellent. I'm here. Excellent. So I'm. I'm what so a happy, sorry. happy uh, chance that we got to sit down yeah, with you, man. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's nice. Yep. And I'm, I'm taking the business card. Yes, please card. take the business card. Have a sticker. Business card. And a sticker. Oh, yeah, and a sticker. <laughs> and a sticker. And I liked you already on Facebook. Oh, thank you so much. I will do that on Instagram. And yes, we're all. I, over I would the place. like your email if I could it's, like your it's email. It's on that business card right there. Okay. You're all set, buddy. So, I'll, I'll put it in my mask. There you go. <laughs> and Make put use it of on it. my face. Close to your heart. So, so close, close to my whatever there is in there. Thank you, sir, so much. It we really appreciate pleasure. it. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice boots. <laughs> Shoe boots. Yeah. Boots are awesome. <laughs> Jews wearing cowboy boots. I'm always in boots. Getting out of your way. Johannes, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure. That was great. Great fun.
I can't, oh. I can't stretch mine like that far. <laughs>